Hello, fiber friends, and welcome. This is the third video in a series, From Fleece to Socks. So today we're going to prep this fiber, and I'll show you what that looks like. But first, if you haven't seen the other two videos before this one, go check those out. If you're not sure where to find them, I'll put the link in the description below this video. All right, we're all caught up. Let's get prepping. Here is my scoured fleece. If you look at the cut side of this fleece, you can see that the lanolin washed out very, very well. But these tips, man, these tips are just <sighs> messy. What is the best way to prepare a fleece that has very dirty tips and just generally a lot of VM throughout? The wool combs that I'm using to prep this fleece are from Valkyrie. They are fine combs, which has to do with the distance between the teeth. There are two rows of teeth. That's called the pitch. These are two pitch combs. You have to say that very carefully or people may misunderstand you. If you are using wool combs, be very, very careful. These tips are sharp and you can literally Give yourself a series of puncture wounds in your leg, in your arm, if you are not careful. Now that that's out of the way and we know that we're going to be careful, let's start combing some wool. Here's my fleece. I did do it in large sections. I did not break off locks. Uh, depending on the fleece you're working with, you may want to take more time with the scouring. I just want to get enough out of here to make some socks. So I'm going to pull off the locks now <laughs> rather than before during prep time. And I'm doing that by just sort of finding where the, the lock is. This, is. this is a lock right here. You can see how it comes up to a tip. And so I'm sort of just peeling them away from the fleece. If I just grab it and start randomly pulling, it tends to disturb the neighboring locks and break the whole structure apart. And that makes a bit of a mess. That's not quite what we want to work with. Once I have several locks separated, I'm going to lash them onto my comb. Many people have a device that clamps onto a table or a workbench where they clamp their comb. Brilliant. I don't have one, and so I sort of use my lap. I am very careful, <laughs> but this is dangerous. If you can get your hands on one of them, I recommend it. Now, here's where some people might come after me in my comment section. That's fine. Uh, the standard way that most people are taught and told to use wool combs means that you lash the fiber onto the tines here, the teeth, um, with the cut end first and the tips sticking out. That's typically the way I do it unless, like this, there's a lot of vegetable matter stuck in the tips. When I have a lot of vegetable matter to deal with, I actually will put the tips on first. Why do I do this? Well, a little bit of this is personal preference, but I feel like when I do my first pass through the combs, when the tips are facing inward, it keeps all of this gunky vegetable matter on the inside of the combs, and so it comes out with the first pass. When I have the tips on the outside, it seems to put the vegetable matter all throughout the fibers and I have to continue combing and continue combing to get that to all fall out. So 
when I have a very dirty fleece, I will lash on to the, whoops, it's a dog fur. So when I have a very dirty fleece, I will lash on with the tips first. I do this carefully so that I do not stab myself. There we go. This is what it looks like when it's all set up and ready to comb. These are the mini combs. You can get combs that are wider. You can add more fiber to them. You can use a hackle, all kinds of different equipment, but I'm just showing you the process I use for these fine Valkyrie combs. To begin with, I, I keep my hand firmly planted on my knee. This helps to save my shoulder. If, if you're working with your equipment, whether it's combs or cards, hand cards, I, I see people doing it too, where they have it out in the air like this, you're using so much extra effort and you can cause your muscles to fatigue or possibly even to strain and we don't want that. So I plant my left hand, in my case, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to comb with my right hand, on my leg and I come at the comb at an angle. I don't need to dig very deep that would be counterproductive. I'm going to just come at the tips of the fibers and start to comb it out, just like this. And some of the tips are coming across to the other comb, that's okay. We will take care of that. It's all part of the process. I'm going to continue combing gently, sort of teasing it out just like this. And I don't want to yank it so it breaks. I just want to gently transfer from one comb to the other. There we are. All that's left is a little short bit but will you look at all this vegetable matter? This is dried hay, dirt, whatever that sheep got into and some broken tips. That's fuzz that we do not want to have in our socks. Now my right comb is full. I'm going to swap it back to my left hand and comb it again. This time the fibers are aligned so that what was the tips is on the outside and what was the cut end is on the inside. So because I line them up with the tips inward first, I expect to see a lot of vegetable matter off after my first pass. Because the second pass has the cut side facing in, I will expect to see some shorter fibers, maybe some second cuts. That's where the shearer goes over a section twice and you get short little bits from the second cut. That's why we call that second cuts. And anything that was part of the cut end that is too short to line up with the rest of this fiber. This has a lot of linty looking bits, of course some vegetable matter because this fleece is just full of that. And it really looks linty. This is not something we want to have in our yarn. And now I take a look at my fiber to see where I'm at. This is the cut end facing outward and the tips facing inward. You can see there's a little staining on those tips just from the color variation. This is why it's always good to wash your yarn when you're finished spinning it. So I'm going to do another pass with the combs. I feel like there's still some vegetable matter that we can get out. This is the dirty tip <laughs> of this fiber. And as I pull it apart, you can see it's a good thing we did another pass. It's still pretty messy. There's some dirt building up on the back of the comb. The next fiber tool that you need after the combs is a diz. A diz can be as simple as a button or it can be fancy and lovingly carved or created. There are many, many varieties and options available out there, but for me, I use 
Uh, this gauge checker for my knitting needles, it's metal, it is sturdy, and it works just great. So I'm going to use this to diz the fiber off of my combs. Even though I have done a number of passes back and forth, I make sure that my final pass leaves my tips facing outward. When I diz, I want to pull from the tips. I've been using the number seven hole, which is 4.5 millimeters across, and I just get it through that little bit, and here we go. I start to pull, and then I slide my diz down towards the comb, and then I pull again, and then I slide my diz down towards my wool comb, I pull again and slide, pull again and slide, pull and slide. And I'm holding on to my comb with my legs. Again, you can get a little clamping device to uh, attach it to a table, but this works for me. And then I don't have to do the adductor machine at the gym. So I just keep pulling and sliding, pulling and sliding pulling and sliding until we're done. Here is my combed fiber and it is ready to spin. I like to make sure I know which end is which. Some people like to put a little, a little uh, knot on the end that you can easily undo later and wrap it up into a lovely little nest. There it is, ready to spin. Well, you saw how much fiber it took to get this much wool ready to spin. You saw how long that took, and you have seen how big this fleece is. So the next video probably won't be ready for a little while. I will be here happily combing away and getting this fiber all ready to go. But like I said, it'll take a while. So if you have any recommendations for some good shows that I can binge watch while I'm combing my fleece, let me know what's your favorite in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the next videos in the series.